For people, it's your boy Derek, aka the Tottenham Pele. Hope you're all good. Welcome to another video. And um, this video is going to be about the start of my footballing journey, so to speak. Um, not a journey to professional football, but um, where I got the passion for football, where I fell in love with the game. And um, yeah, so hope you like this video. If you do and enjoying the content, then make sure you subscribe. There'll be a lot more stories coming out from me. So right, where did the passion for the beautiful game come from? You might be asking. Um, my first real memory of football. When I was young, I used to live in, in Ghana in a town called Kumasi. And in that town, people were absolutely fanatic about football. People loved football in that town. Trust me. And in Ghana, there were two main teams in Ghana. There were, one was Asante Kotoko and the other one was Accra Hasfold and they were big rivals. And in Ghana, when those two teams played, the whole country shuts down. Where I was from, when Kotoko, Asante Kotoko plays and they lose the game, trust me, the whole town is just like, it's like a ghost town. The mood changes, you can, you can feel, you can literally feel the atmosphere. You can literally feel the mood. This is how much people love football in that country. And obviously I was way too young to go to the stadiums then when I was three years old. I was way too young, so my family members used to put the radio on. So we used to listen to the radio and, and it felt like he was actually there in the stadium when the radio was on and the commentators got going crazy when Asante Kotoko scores. Oh my God, you can hear for miles, you can hear the their roars from house to house. And it, it felt so amazing. It was so like, even though I didn't understand much what was going on, but I always was like jumping and laughing because everyone's doing the same. So. <laughs> That's when I first fell in love with football, I feel, was when it was with Asante Kotoko and just how the whole town would just shut down when that team was playing. Them winning is the difference between some people eating in Ghana. People will not eat. when If Kotoko loses, people will not eat. Do you know what I mean? And so I fell in love with football from from then. I think it got into my head that this is what I want to do as a, as a career. And in Ghana, we didn't have many footballs. So what we used to do is just roll up loads of socks and just try and make a little little round object where we, we would just be playing, running around with it. So that was our football. And when we was younger, our parents left and came to England. So they left me and my little brother there. And he stayed with my grandma on my mum's side. And I had to go and stay um, with my grandma on my dad's side. So we never really got to see each other. And whenever my, my parents would ask, would ask us, what do you guys want from London? I would always be like, can you get me a football? I was always, always ask for a football. Every time when they asked if you needed anything, I would say, please get me, get me a football. So one day he actually did get me a, a football. He sent over this amazing, sent over this black and white football and it was so amazing. It was, it was like so shiny, so perfectly round. It was just, I think it was the best thing that I've, I ever received. It was like Christmas come, um, come early. I just couldn't believe that I had this shiny. Cause in Ghana, like I said, we always used to play with like any object, like whatever we can find on the floor. We, we just imagined it's a football. So to actually get, football, real football, it's that like rarity. No one had a real football in my town where I was from. No one had a real football. So for me as a five year old, four or five year old with a with a real football, this shiny black and white football. Because you know back in the days all the footballs used to be black and white. And to have that shiny black and white football was just amazing, was just unreal. I was so over the moon with, with it. And I would play with it from morning to noon every day and behind my house there used to be there used to be some some fields there where where the older kids used to go over there and men used to go over there and play football like 11 aside and stuff and i used to love going to watch 
And one time my muscle went over there and took my shiny black and white ball. And I took it over there and they were looking at me like, Derek, Derek, come, come, come. Like, can we use your ball? And I was like, no, no way. You're not going to use my ball. He's like, please, please, let us use your ball. If you let us use your ball, we're going to let you join in the game with us. So I was like, mm, okay, cool. So I give them the ball and then we'll be playing and little five-year-old me will be there trying to tackle them, trying to get get the ball off them. And that was some really, really um, fun memory. Obviously, I couldn't tackle, but it was just really nice running around the field with them. I would play all day, because like, literally they played all day there. They didn't stop, so I'll be there all day. And you might be thinking, as a five-year-old, Ghana's different. When you're five, five-year-old in Ghana is like a... A ten-year-old in England, like you're so streetwise, you go everywhere on your own. You go, do you know what I mean? Your soul, your mental age is just, is, do you know what I mean? Your mental age is older. So yeah, I'll, I'll go there, play from morning to evening, until my grandma will be looking for me, searching everywhere for me until she comes and sees me and like, Larry, why are you doing that? Don't you know you're gonna get hurt? Like shouting at the, at the older kids, like he's a little child. Why are you letting him do that? Get him. Pass me the ball. <laughs> she take the ball and pull me over. I said, get off me, get off me. I want to play football. So literally, I would do that as soon as I get home. Next day come, I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll be back there. You could not keep me away from them fields. So that's that's one of my early, early, early football football memories. For a few more years, and we've now, me and my brother, we've now joined our parents um, in England, in London. And my first memory of London in regards to football is when I first went to school and during the play during the um, playtime there was just so many footballs there. I was like, what's going on? I've never been anywhere where there's so many footballs. And it was just like I was I was in heaven. It was like a kid in a candy store or something. I was just in heaven. I was like wow. Obviously now I was able to follow football on the on the TV. I was able to see what it was like. The first ever team I fell in love with in England was like Liverpool. I used to just uh, for some reason we lived in London, but I just used to love watching them um, Liverpool play. I used to love watching the likes of Keith Gillespie, Ian Rush, Kenny Dalglish, John Barnes, Peter Beersley. Um, what's that keeper's name? Chris Gobula, whatever his name is, I actually just love watching Liverpool. Liverpool was my team. I lived in London, but for some reason, I just loved Liverpool. I just loved um, their red kit. I just loved everything um, about Liverpool. It was one of the reasons as well that I fell in love with, with football even more. Mm -hmm. up. All I ever did was just play football anywhere I can in London, anywhere. I just played football at every single opportunity. Um, in school, play football. Back at home, play football. Derek, where are you going? I'm going to the park to play football. Didn't you just come back from the park? Yes, yeah, but I'm going back. So everywhere I go, you all see me with a football. In the football, we were inseparable. Not have too much memory of when I was at 10, 11, 9, 10, 11, 12. All I can remember is that I used to play for my primary school and I used to get a lot of compliment from the coaches. I can't remember, I can't say if I played for any local teams in London when I was 9, 10, 11. I just can't remember. And I don't think I did really. I remember is whenever the school played, I used to be always just the star man. Everyone used to... Uh, I always used to be the first picked, and I remember I, just, I remember also that in school around that age, 10, 9, 11, I always used to be the fastest, the fastest runner. So I was quite, yeah, I was quite a popular kid in school because of my football ability. I was starting to generate interest from um, football teams, um, especially when I used to play for my primary school and Arsenal were keen on me. So I went to train with them a few times. I was doing really, really well. And I think they liked me. But unfortunately, when I was 12, around 12, um, our parents decided that me and my brother, 
we needed to go back to Ghana to for education. They felt that um, going back to Ghana for education would give us the best the best chance in, in life really and the best chance of getting a good education. They believed in the Ghanaian education system. It was really unfortunate because I was doing really well in football but at the same time I have to respect what they're saying because me and my brother were getting a bit a little bit troublesome and starting to you know what I mean get into trouble here and there. So um I have no problem with that. So unfortunately I had to leave Arsenal and without even signing the contract, I had to leave and go back to to Ghana for another two years. Although we was born in Ghana, we was very, very young and I didn't really remember um, a lot of things, but going back when you're like 11, 12, going back there was, was really, really tough. It really, really taught me a lot of, a lot about myself, about my mental strength, um, you know, and living in England and having to go back to, to Ghana was very, was very tough. Things are a lot different then. We've been used to the, the way England is and we had everything at our finger fingertips and now we have to back in Ghana, we have to work for everything. Simple thing as getting water, you have to work for it. Simple thing as getting food, you have to work for it. Simple thing as going to school, you have to walk there for 30, 40, 40 minutes. You know, so it was very tough and I think it taught me a lot about my mental strength and I believe that helped me further along in my football career. After a couple of years staying in Ghana and um, coming back to England, um, I was a different person. I was a more reserved person, I was a more shy person, I was a more timid person. And to be honest, because I came back, I was like 14, about to be 15. Um, I was very, very, like, very small as well compared to the rest of my peers. So it was very, very difficult making friends. It was very difficult, like, being confident and stuff. And that, I think, affected my footballing a lot. Like, going to secondary school was very difficult for me. It was difficult, although I was a very confident person playing football. I felt my personality and my timidness that affected me a lot because obviously I was probably the smallest person in my in my year. When I say the smallest, it doesn't. It's, it's not like I was. You could see that I should be in two year back, if you know what I mean. Like I was, I was, I was that small. Okay, but I just loved playing football. Early morning before school, I'd be the first person there. I get. I can't remember what time school used to start, but if school used to start at nine. I'd be there at eight thirty. Um, playing football <laughs> before the start of class, I'll be already sweaty and, and stuff like that. That's the only time I get to be myself, I get to be happy. It was fun time for me in playtime. I would get in trouble because my parents would buy me a new pair of shoes and I'll go home the same day and I'll be absolutely wrecked. And they'll be like, do you know what? You're wearing that to the, for the rest of the year. So I'll be like, what the hell? So. In my school bag, I had my books and I always had an extra, whether it was the Tesco's bag or the Sainsbury's bag. I always used to have a bag and a ball with me. No fail every day. I took that into school. And people started telling me how good I was in secondary school and asking me, um, how comes I don't play for a team and stuff like that. They said, you should try out for the school team. So I said, okay, no problem. I don't know, I think the school held trials or something or, so I inquired, I spoke to the PE teacher and I asked him, listen, I want to play football for the school team. Can I, can I come and play? So he said, yeah, okay, we, we're going to have a game. You can come along, you can play. To be honest, <laughs> that must have been the worst thing I ever did. I went to the game, the game started and I remember coming on for like 10, 15 minutes and they were the worst 10, 15 minutes of my life. As when I was watching on the sideline, I looked at them and I was thinking, bloody hell. Everyone's like twice my size. How am I gonna ever compete with them? That's just crazy. I was just looking at, I don't even wanna come on. I think it was winter as well, it was cold, I was freezing. Here's me shivering along the line. The coach like, go on the pitch, Derek. I went on the pitch and to be honest, I hated every minute I was on that pitch. I didn't go near ever. I was hiding. I was like, do not pass me the ball. I do not want the ball. Keep the ball away from me. Ref, 
when you're going to blow your whistle, ref, is the game done yet? But when the game was done, I said to myself, wow, I'm never going to play for my school team again. This is just, this is just too much for me. One thing that stuck out in my head was that everybody just kept going on at me and I knew I was good enough, but I just didn't have the confidence to, to show my stuff out there. And people, oh, everyone that I played when the play one kept going on at me, Derek, you're more than yours. You're a really good player. Even the people that played for the school team were full of compliment. Every time we would like play little games in the, um, at lunch in school, I will, I will always be one of the first ones to get picked. I just want to be in the academy so badly. One thing that stuck out in my head was some of the, some of the boys that were playing for my school team, they were really, really good. Some of them played for QPR, Arsenal, Tottenham, West Ham, Chelsea. Most of them were at big clubs and I actually just look at them every time they come in, they'll always wear their team's jacket. They'll always wear it to, to school. I used to always look at them and thought, oh, I wish that was me. I was so jealous and envious. I was just like, wow, when would that be me? But I knew that I had no chance because I was just, I was just too small and I was just too tiny and it used to, used to hurt me so badly. Because all I ever wanted to do was play, was play football. I just didn't know um, what to do. You know, there was even a B team for the school that I even went to try out for and I just couldn't get in because they, no, no, no. I just, I just don't know why. I just couldn't perform when it came to the school team and he just said, no, you're not good enough. You're not ready. You can't. And he's like, I see people that I play with on the playground that I absolutely destroy playing for the school team, playing for the, the school B team. And I'm just, I'm just, they're just like, sorry, Derek, it's not going to happen. You know, you're not quite at that level yet. So that always um, stuck with me that how I never got to play for for my school team always sticks with me. Passion yeah. for for the game almost died in school. Like it practically died. I had I was so low, low and confident. I was just so lost. I just I just thought the game that I loved so much deserted me. The game that I loved so much um, is bringing so much joy to me. Football. It's just an absolute myth now. I just, I just, I'm just falling in love, out of love with it. Like, on one hand, everyone's telling me how good I was and how I should be playing for the school team. On the other hand, the school team, the mind is telling me I'm not good enough. I had no self-belief, no self-confidence to show what I'm doing on the playground and show it. I'm so afraid because everyone was just that, so much bigger. People were also telling me, like, Derek, you're good enough, go and get trials for Barney, go and try out for Brentford, go and try out for other low London club. But I was just like, no way, it's not gonna happen. I'm just, I'm just, I, I was just too scared. And it doesn't help that my my parents are not a big football fanatics. Um, they don't know the ins and out of football or they were interested in, basically interested in was our education and getting the best grades. Hence, that's why they sent us to Ghana. So football wasn't on top of their agenda, as it was for me. As much as I was getting knockbacks and as much as I didn't feel that I was good enough, I still felt that I wanted to be a professional footballer. And I remember crying to my dad and said, Dad, I really want to play football, but I just can't because everyone's that much bigger than me. Look at the size of them. Look at the size of me. I'm just, I'm just so small compared to everyone else, I'm never going to play football. And I can remember as it sticks out in my head, my dad um, saying to me, look at me, like, look at him. And I was like looking at him and I said, well, I said, do you think I can play football? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, don't worry. I'm very confident that you're going to grow, grow to be um, either my size or bigger than me. And I was like, I don't think so. And even if I do get as big as you, you're not exactly the biggest person in the world. So I was like, yeah, the Tottenham Stadium was not too far from us. I never ever went to see a football match. I'm going to go and see some of the players and see how big they are and see how intimidating. Because on TV, they look huge. And I was just so obsessed with my size. I was so obsessed that I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it because of my size. So I decided to go to outside the Tottenham Stadium. And when the players, I think they finished again, the when the players were coming out, I looked at them and I, and I remember seeing Rude Fox. And I was like, hold on a minute. On TV, you look absolutely massive, but in real life, you look how small you are. So from then on, I think that 
gave me the confident boost I needed to realize that, do you know what? There's still a chance for me to to make it. Cause when I see, I saw what he was doing on TV and I've, and I've just seen him in, in, in real person in life and he's just so small as well. I was like, do you know what? If I can put a few inches on, on me, I think I'll be able to play football. Blue Fox is smaller than my dad. If I can grow a bit and be the size of my dad, I think I can make it. I think um, I've got a good chance. So that alone, like seeing that I can clearly, every time I think about that moment, I can just see your dream of playing professional football is not over. There's a big chance you can do it. If you first can do it, you can do it as well. And I believed I had enough talent and enough about me. I just needed to build my self-confidence up to be able to believe in myself again. That was the start. That was a real start because I was, I was, I think I was about 15, 16. So I just opened up my eyes. I just made me feel like, wow, the dream is still alive. I can still play professional football. Yeah, I can do it. It was one that, for some reason, it was one of the happiest days of my life. I went back home and said to my dad, Dad, you would not believe it. I just saw one of the Tottenham players and they were smaller than you. They were tiny. And he's an amazing player. Can you believe it? He's so amazing. No one can touch him. He's so amazing. I just went and saw him. Now, you're right. I believe that, yes, I can make it still. So from that moment on, the road to football was back on. My dream was still alive. And I still, the passion was back. The love was back. The anxieties were over. So guys, this was like a mini story. I know it went on for longer than I expected, but this was a mini story I took you from when I was young, a baby, kind of like a baby in, in Ghana growing up around football to when I moved to England with my parents and falling in love with football, falling in love with Liverpool, to going to school and seeing um, and trying to get into my school football team, losing their love for football, finding the love for football again. So I just took you through that little journey I had. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't bore you too much. <laughs> I'm not a comedian. I'm not here to get laughter. I'm just here to tell my story and I hope you found it interesting and somewhat inspiring and you will stick around for more stories because um this is just part and i'll say this is just part one of my story into becoming a professional um footballer this was just basically again for you guys to get to know where i found the love for the game where i found the, the passion for the game so hopefully the next video will be more about how i prepared myself to be ready for to go into professional football to give myself a chance what i did how i trained the routes i took into trying to work out the best way to realizing my dream to make my my dream come true so i won't talk too much about that that will be in the next video so i hope you guys will join me in the next video now i'll explain i'll explain to you more about, um, about my journey into trying to become a professional footballer so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you stick around for more videos. Thank you again and I'll see you guys in the next video and bye. By the way, don't forget to check out my my hats, my merch. Don't forget to check them out. But don't forget to check out my stuff on, on my website, freshballers.com. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook.